There is a tool in Illustrator, and arguably other design software as well, that completely changed how I design logos. And when I started using this tool, the quality of my work went up, and using and relying on this tool not only helped me to become a better designer, but when my students started using it as well, the quality of their work went kadoosh. So you can see here I have the Discord logo, and if I go and grab the pen tool, this is a mistake that a lot of designers do. So we're just gonna click and drag, click and drag. And whilst you can do this and it can work with a lot of experience, there is a better, far easier way to get much smoother curves. And it's not like you can't use the pen tool, like sometimes the pen tool is great, sometimes it's necessary. But if you can use this main tool that I'm about to show you, along with a few other supporting tools, if you can get away with using those first, then you absolutely should. So believe it or not, we're actually going to go to the rectangle tool, click and hold, and we're going to use the ellipse tool. And you can do this with any of the basic shapes. So if I go up here, we've got the line segment tool. We've got the arc tool as well, which is totally underrated. But we're going to start with the ellipse tool for this. And we're just going to click and drag. And we're going to create an ellipse. And you can see we're trying to match the ellipse to the lines of the Discord logo. And I'm doing this with an existing logo and just moving this into place. But of course, you may have your own logo design or a sketch that you've done. So there we go. We've got the top and bottom curves both ticked off with that one ellipse. Now what we're going to do is copy, paste in place, and then scale up with the scale tool, that's S on the keyboard. And we're gonna use exactly the same techniques to get these curves here at the bottom. So obviously this logo has got a lot of curves in it. If you have more straight lines, you can use the rectangle tool or the line tool. Okay, exactly the same again, copy, paste in place. And we're gonna drag this copy down and just grab those other lines down there as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're relying on the perfect curves, the raw geometric nature of these basic shapes, if you will, to create the line work rather than drawing the curves manually. Now, so far we've been using ellipses, but if we click and drag holding shift, we do get a perfect circle. And this is one that I use quite a lot as well. And we're gonna just drag this up. And if the shape you're using isn't matching to the curve, try making it larger or smaller. So you can see in this example, I had to play around with the size a little bit. And I don't know about you, but all these circles after a while does give me a bit of a headache. So with the direct selection tool, what I like to do is just delete the segments that I don't need, that are way off somewhere else on the artboard away from the design. And this just makes things visually a bit easier to digest and it, well, it scrambles my brain a lot less. Now I've got these two arcs selected and what I'm gonna do is press O for the reflect tool, hold alt or option and click on that central point and then mirror them onto the other side. We do have a symmetrical logo after all and we definitely wanna get that symmetry perfect. And as you probably guessed, what we're gonna do for the eyes now is well, just use an ellipse. Nothing really fancy going on here. However, rather than eyeballing it and just dragging a copy over, we're gonna use the reflect tool again hold alt or option and click on a point that you know is absolutely central and then copy it vertically. Doing it this way, it just removes any chance of inconsistencies and it keeps the quality super high. Right, now we're using another larger, slightly different shape ellipse and we're gonna try and use this for that outer body. So you can see I am adjusting the size and the position until I get everything to line up. This can take a bit of tinkering as well. And also you can reuse existing shapes. So here you can see me dragging with alt or option to duplicate this, and it just makes the whole process much quicker as well. So again, we see all those circles creeping up. Let's use the direct selection tool to get rid of a few segments, just to simplify it. Maybe let's, uh, yeah, let's get rid of one more. And then we can select this, use the reflect tool, click on that central point, boom, copy, you're done. Perfect symmetry. Right, now let's zoom in a bit closer. And next up, we need to select everything. And I'm actually gonna go and copy this just in case anything goes wrong. Hopefully it won't, wish me luck. Now we're gonna select the Shape Builder tool. And then what we're gonna do is we can hold down Alter Option and click on individual lines that we don't need. And this will remove them from the design. So we can just go around here and we can also drag through as well. And effectively what we're doing is we're just trimming off all of the excess around the outside of the design. 
So what we should be left with in a minute, if I just speed run this, is just the design itself. And if we use this tool without holding down any keyboard shortcuts, we can click and drag through and it will combine shapes together. So you can see this part is really easy now. We're just clicking and dragging through. Ah, and if you get anything like this that doesn't work, again, just hold down Alt or Option and click on the lines to remove them. So let's just combine these last two pieces and then maybe hold Alt or Option and click on those to get rid of them. And uh, yeah, there we go. That uh, has worked pretty well. Now, don't be fooled. The Shape Builder tool can do some weird things and introduce bits of leftover geometry and anchor point that you can see here. So we've got to go into Outline mode with Command or Control Y and zoom in nice and close or even move this out the way. And you can see here all those pieces that have been left over. We've got to get rid of them and then we'll pop this back in the center. And that is just one of the quirks, unfortunately, of using the Shape Builder tool. But now we can select this, Shift X to swap the stroke to a fill. And there we go. You can see we have one solid fill color and I'm going to punch in the color for the Discord logo. I mean, at least hopefully that's correct. And there we go. We have the finished logo design. We have perfectly clean curves, perfect symmetry. And honestly, when I review a lot of work, this is the same process that I use to fix up logo designs. And it just makes your work much more professional. And there you go. It's amazing how far you really can push the ellipse tool. So if you enjoyed this and you'd like to learn how to design logos professionally, I've got my course linked below. But otherwise, take care and I'll see you in the next one.